Is evidence for human evolution evidence that humans evolved? Without a question, since our inception as a species about 100 to 150,000 years ago, it's very clear that human beings have evolved. For example, anthropologists have documented that the average brain size for humanity about 100,000 years ago was 1,500 centimeters cubed, and today it's 1,350 centimeters cubed. When humans first appeared on Earth, we were not able to digest milk sugar after two years of age. And about uh, 10,000 years ago, in different parts around the world, human beings evolved what's called lactase persistence, where they now are able to digest milk sugar into adulthood. And then as humans began to migrate around the world, regional differences emerged in humanity. These regional differences account for racial diversity in humanity and involve differences in facial features, body shape, skin color, things like that. The bottom line is that human beings have evolved. And many people will use this as evidence for human evolution, that we have an evolutionary origin as a species. Now, I disagree with that because all of these examples are instances of what we would call microevolution, variation taking place within a species. In fact, as someone who holds to a creation model perspective, I would actually argue that this ability for microevolution is part of God's providential care for all life on earth, giving organisms, including human beings, the ability to adapt to an ever-changing world. So when God said to multiply and fill the earth, because we had this capacity for microevolutionary change, we could actually move into new environments and not only survive those environments, but actually thrive in them. But the point here is this, that evidence for evolution happening at one scale of biological change is not legitimate evidence for evolution happening at another scale of biological change. Uh, let me explain. When I think about evolution, I like to think about five categories of evolution. Microevolution, which would be like the peppered moths changing their wing color in response to environmental pollution. Speciation, where one species gives rise to a closely related sister species, like the Galapagos finches. Or microbial evolution, where microorganisms can evolve, like bacteria acquiring resistance to antibiotics. All three categories of evolution are well evidenced. None of them are controversial. But there's also two other categories of evolution that lack, I think, scientific rigor and support. One of them is chemical evolution, the idea that molecules could self-organize into the very first cells. There's some serious scientific challenges to that idea. Or the idea of macroevolution, where one major group could evolve to give rise to another major group, like an ape-like creature giving rise to humans. And so the point being this, that there are scientific challenges to chemical evolution and macroevolution, uh, and that we want to be careful not to accept evidence for evolution at one scale, microevolutionary changes, as evidence for macroevolution. The evidence has to correspond to the level of biological transformation. If you want to know more about how you can think about evolution, I invite you to consider checking out the book, Thinking About Evolution. I was one of the co-authors along with Sue Dykes, Mark Perez, and A.J. Roberts.